I've been learning Blender 3D 2.8 for 2D animation the past week, and I think it's about time that I show you what I've learned. No joke, you can literally use Blender for four different things for completely different things. So if you don't know Blender already, I recommend watching a YouTube video, at least on the interface. I have added quite a few resources in the description for your benefit. So go check those out. When you first open Blender, you'll see this. We can get to the 2D animation workspace by pressing this button or going up to this drop-down menu and 2D animation will be one of those options. When we click on 2D animation, it will bring us into a workspace that looks like this. You'll have all the windows and tools up automatically that we'll need to make some animation. If we turn our attention over here, we can see that our brush options are all laid out right up here, and all of our tools are right down here. If we click on this drop down menu, you can see all sorts of different options that you might actually see if you were working with an actual 3D object, which makes Blender cool because it treats all of your 2D layers as if they were a 3D object. So I could uh, rotate this or position it however I want as if it were a 3D object. Now if we come over here you'll see a layers panel. Uh, we, can, uh, we can lock the layers, we can turn the onion skinning on and off. It's really quite similar to a layer say in Photoshop or any other 2D art program. And now if we come down here, you'll see our timeline. You can change your start and end frames over here. Normally the end frame defaults to 250, but I've changed mine to 20, so it loops nicely. You can scroll back and forth between the frames using the left mouse button or using the keys on your keyboard. To create a new keyframe, simply go to an empty frame and then draw on that frame and it will create a new keyframe automatically. And now if we come over here, we can see our materials tab. And now materials are cool because if you say, if I draw this purple line here, right? And then I come down to where it is colored purple, I can change it and that line will change colors as well. That this ball is also on that material. So if I wanted to change the ball to be blue, now it is blue. Kind of cool. Uh, and once again, Blender treats 2D objects as if they're 3D. So actually, if we come into sculpt mode here, then we can change our drawing to our liking, as if we were sculpting a 3D object. There's also a bunch of other things that you can do, like add modifiers or uh, so I could make this ball look shiny. There's there's a whole world to be explored here. Um, you could even draw a character and rig it up with 3D bones and then it, it would be like, um, you know, the, the paper cut out kind of animation. You could even do that. You see there's a lot of potential uh, for being able to do 2D animation in a 3D software. If we click our middle mouse button, we can actually pan around where our ball is in 3D space. Um, uh, use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Um, and that's kind of cool. Uh, and if we hit zero on our numpad, then it will bring us back to the default view. Or if we hit this button, Oh, and you can move the view as well. That's kind of cool. Finally, when you're done with your animation, you can come over to these two tabs where you can set your resolution, aspect ratio, frame start and end. Um, and up here, you can change the render engine. I don't quite know what the difference is between the three. And here you can change all sorts of things like even depth of field or motion blur, um, which is really really cool. If we come back down to this tab though, and we 
hit this, you can see that there are multiple movie options. I have chosen FFmpeg video. Uh, if we come here, we can also choose the folder in which the rendered animation will go. If I want an MP4 file format, then I go FFmpeg video, then I come down to my video codec, and I press MPEG4, and that'll give you an MPEG4 video. Uh, there are also quite a few others to choose from. Once you're happy with these settings, just come up to render, and then hit render animation. And there you go, you've successfully rendered an animation in Blender. Blender can be a frustrating software to learn, so I've added some resources in the description to help you out. If you want to learn to animate something in the first place, you could either check out the rest of my channel, or you could check out the description. You've been watching Ideas Animation, go to something creative. I'll see you next time.